When this man's wife gave birth to a black baby, he dumped her in the most cruel way. Twenty years later, something unbelievable happened. Welcome to Amazing Truth Channel. Do not forget to subscribe and activate the bell button to receive all new. Now go to the story. Anna shook Kant fear as Jeff walked menacingly towards her. She tightened her hold around the baby sleeping peacefully in her arms. Tears streamed down her face as dread filled the pit of her belly. Who's the father of that thing? Jeff bellowed as he drew closer, his eyeballs blazing with fury. For fear of his anger, Anna only whimpered and didn't utter a thing. Answer me! He roared, this time hitting his fists on the wall where she rested. Her fears heightened, causing her to jerk as she shivered. Jeff groaned in anger, holding his fists tightly as he shot daggers at her with his eyes. Without another word, he stormed out of the hospital room. Tears rolled down Anna's eyes as she watched her husband leave. She took another look at the beautiful baby boy sleeping calmly in her arms. She took pity on him as she felt he didn't deserve to be welcomed in such a manner. Still, she couldn't fathom how the baby came out as black. She and Jeff were white. Even the medical staff didn't have an explanation for Anna. They only suggested some tests, including a DNA test. With this, they would be able to come up with the much-needed answers. Five days later, Anna was discharged from the hospital. Throughout her stay at the hospital, Jeff never called or came around to check on her, and Anna was more than disappointed in Jeff. What happened to all the vows they had made to be there for each other, no matter what? Still, she understood his anger. If she were in his shoes, she would have been angry too. But abandoning her at the hospital was just too much. It meant he had lost trust in her completely. Even if he entertained doubts about the child being his, they could go far as a DNA test. It was much better than doubting her completely on a thought. When she finally got home, she met Jeff, who immediately gave her a cold, bloody look as their eyes locked. Without a word, he walked into the guest room. Anna sighed and entered their room a few minutes later after she had fed her baby and made sure he was fast asleep. She decided to confront her husband. Jeff looked up in shock when Anna entered the guest room. What do you want? He bellowed, angry that she even had the guts to walk into his room. Anna remained silent until she had gotten close enough. She then began to remind them of their earlier days and the vows they had made to each other. She asked him why he would entertain this much doubt and abandon her at the hospital. Why would he think she would at any time be disloyal to the relationship they shared? She then swore that she had never entertained the thought of cheating on him, let alone actually do it. She even suggested they go for a DNA test if he still doubted her. Tears streamed her eyes as she spoke and pleaded, but all Jeff did was throw her dirty looks. When it seemed she was done, Jeff let out a sarcastic laugh. He then said he would not waste his money on a DNA test, proving the obvious that she had been unfaithful to him with a black man. He told her to leave with her bastard and go meet her lover, or else he would make the house unbearable for her and the baby. Then he pushed her out of the room and ordered her to just pack her things and leave, or he would force her to do so. Afterward, he shut the door in her face. Anna sat by the door and wept bitterly. She continued to bang on the door, begging Jeff to believe her, but he remained deaf to her pleas. The only time he responded was to tell her to leave his place and begin packing her things, or he would do something she would regret. When she got exhausted from pleading and arguing with a rock, she got up and went to her room. She decided to give him some space. She understood Jeff's anger was bad. She didn't want to be a victim of it. Probably he needed more space and time to think through. She decided to give him that. She then called her sister and explained everything to her. That night, her sister drove down to Anna's apartment and helped her pack a few things and some of the babies. As Anna entered the car with her baby, she looked behind, hoping Jeff would come around, but of course, no one was in sight. Her sister tried to calm her, telling her it would be fine. A few days later, Anna woke up to discover that all the money in the joint account she shared with Jeff had been cleared. She was stunned. Her heart raced, and tears streamed down her face as she kept checking the balance. She couldn't believe what she was seeing. This time around, she damned the consequences and decided to confront Jeff. This was madness. She quickly got dressed and headed down to their matrimonial home. But on getting there, she realized something even worse had happened. The house was empty. 
all of Jeff's things and all of hers were gone. As if that wasn't enough, all the baby stuff was gone too. Why was Jeff doing this? She kept pondering. Why would he hurt her this much for an accusation he wasn't willing to prove? Did he just enjoy hurting her? Hours went by before Anna eventually got up, wiping her tears. When she saw a piece of paper by the wall, it was a note written by Jeff. She could feel her heart almost popping out of her chest as she read the last words he wrote to her. My dear Anna, I can't believe you would betray my trust this much. I can't imagine life with you and that bastard, so I think it's better we call it quits. Please don't ever try to reach me. You'll be meeting my lawyer soon. Anna's eyeballs widened as she read through the note, and when the realization of what this meant hit her, she screamed and burst into tears as she fell onto the ground. She cried and wailed. She tried calling him, but of course his line was switched off. She guessed he had blocked her number. She then called her sister and cried bitterly, narrating what she met at home. Her sister, who was at work, had to make an excuse to attend to her. Two weeks later, Jeff's lawyers came around and handed her the divorce papers to sign. She was quite exhausted from crying, and any efforts to save her marriage were more or less a waste of time. She just signed the papers without arguments. The pain was unbearable. She had lost strength from crying, and she was agonizingly bitter. Persist kept cheering her up, telling her that Jeff never deserved her in the first place, that he was gone for good. But nothing her sister did was able to soothe the pain. It was only able to help her stay strong, but she was grateful for her sister. She was always there to cheer and help with the baby. She had also kept her from going into depression. Despite the unforeseen circumstances, his birth seemed to have brought Anna never blamed her baby for her misfortunes. Each time she looked at him, she was grateful to God for the gift of life. She felt nothing but love for her baby and named him Jaden. She was determined to raise him with all the love in her heart, counting him innocent of the trauma she was going through. Her maternal leave came to an end, and she had to resume work. She took Jaden to a daycare in the morning before driving down to work, but due to the agony she was going through, she became less efficient at work. She worked in customer service at a microfinance bank. Tasks that seemed easier for her initially felt tougher to run smoothly. The one smiling and bubbling young Anna became moody and reserved, appearing a bit shabby. A few weeks later, her supervisor, Pedro Williams, called her. He began asking her what the matter was, as she was no longer the employee he had come to know and appreciate. At first, she claimed nothing was wrong and apologized for her recent shortcomings. As he persisted, she claimed it was probably because she had just rounded her maternal leave. It was later she broke into tears and related to her boss the current state of her marriage due to the birth of her baby. Pedro felt sorry for her. He calmed her and encouraged her to remain strong. He told her that it would all make sense in the end. He then embraced her and let her cry on his chest as he patted her back. She was one of his favorite subordinates due to her work ethics and her personality as a whole. It felt unfair to him that someone as grateful as she would be going through this. He then decided to help her heal. Every break period, Pedro would go out with her. Initially, she was hesitant, but his persistence eventually led her to join him for lunch. Over time, this routine helped build an acquaintance between them. During the weekends, Pedro also came around to see her and the baby and asked how they were doing. Sometimes, if he had time on his hands, he would take them out to either see a movie or to enjoy a park or a beach or to a nice restaurant. Sometimes he just drove them around to see and enjoy nature, knowing Anna barely came out after work hours as she would wallow in sorrow. After a few months, Anna did begin to heal. She gradually returned to the cheerful lady she had always been at work. She was most grateful to her boss for helping her get over the hurts her past marriage brought. Pedro was happy for her healing and still kept coming around to check on her progress. It had become kind of a routine between the two of them, and it just went on naturally. A year later, feelings began to spark. Pedro was a widower. His wife had died during childbirth, and the baby was stillborn, bringing double tragedy for Pedro. Maybe that's why he had emphasized so easily with Anna's pain. He had been broken beyond words, and it had taken him a year to properly heal. But he had never felt the need to move on, and now he realized he felt something he had never expected to feel and had even given up or ever feeling again. He had honestly started his relationship with Anna on a very platonic note, 
He had only wanted to help her heal, but now he felt she was more than a friend to him. He wanted more than just friendship. So, on one weekend, he asked if they could take their relationship to another level, as he expressed his feelings for her. Anna was surprised. She too was beginning to admire him beyond their working relationship and friendship, but she didn't expect he would feel the same. Unfortunately, although she had healed from the trauma of Jeff's betrayal, she still loved him. So, she couldn't love someone else as she could him. She politely declined Pedro's request, hurting him deeply. Still, Pedro didn't give up. He remained there for her and kept showing her how much he cared for her. Anna appreciated his kindness and care, and they remained friends. One day, she was cooking in the kitchen when she heard Jaden scream from the living room. Alarmed, she decided to rush to know what was wrong and didn't pay attention to her surroundings. She hit the pot containing the hot sauce she was stirring while trying to run out, and it came tumbling down and poured all over her legs. She screamed in pain as the heat burned her flesh. Jaden rushed to the kitchen instead and began crying again when he saw his mom crying in pain. He was too young to know what to do, and the only way he could express his confusion was by crying. Anna knew she had to be strong for herself and her son. Despite the pain, she got up and walked to her phone while patting her son. Her sister was away on a business trip at the time. The only person she could call was Pedro. She called him to ask him if he could help her to get to the hospital. He immediately agreed and got into his car. While waiting for Pedro, she applied first aid on the wound. When they got to the hospital, she was admitted for proper treatment. Anna was scared about the welfare of her son. Her sister was away, and she had no one who would willingly look after Jaden. But even without asking or expressing her worries, Pedro told her he would look after Jaden while she was at the hospital. Anna couldn't express her gratitude enough. She was too grateful for his kindness and thoughtfulness. Pedro acted like a loving father to Jaden. He looked after him with so much love and patience. He made sure to meet his needs and ensured the boy was okay. And while returning from work after picking Jaden up from the daycare, he would drive them both down to see how Anna was faring at the hospital. When they came around, Anna could see how happy Jaden was with Pedro. She was skeptical about him staying with Pedro, thinking he would be uncomfortable, as he had never been alone with anyone else besides her sister. But she was shocked to see how Pedro and Jaden flowed seamlessly. She even heard Jaden refer to him as Papa rather than the usual Uncle Pedro he called him. A week later, she was discharged, and Pedro drove her home. He then ordered that she rested at home for a few days before she resumed work. Anna spent those few days at home to reflect on the bond between her and her boss. She was convinced he loved her and her son. She too could no longer deny the fact that she had fallen in love with him. She had made a decision. She decided to move on. Even Jaden loved him, and she knew he would be a great father to Jaden. More so, Jaden needed a father figure in his life. No one else wore that shoe better than Pedro. When she went back to work, she entered his office to thank him for his kindness and help when she needed it the most, which he gracefully accepted. She then told him that she loved them and would like to take their relationship to a deeper level. Pedro was so happy to hear this that he immediately pulled her into a warm embrace and kissed her. Pedro never ceased to show Anna with love. Soon, her fellow colleagues knew there was something going on between the boss and her. This earned the jealousy of some and admiration of others, but Anna never let it get to her head, and she never let it affect her work. She still remained the cheerful and efficient lady they had known her to be, and Pedro just kept loving her more and more. Two years later, Pedro knew he had to settle down with Anna. So, on her birthday that year, as she entered the office, she was shocked to see the entrance was decorated with balloons and flowers. As she entered inside, she heard the happy birthday shout from her colleagues. She was shocked and looked around in amusement as her hands covered her mouth. She then gave a hearty laugh to fight the tears that threatened to fall. This was too beautiful. She began to thank everyone for the efforts they made in doing this for her. But in the midst of the crowd, she searched for Pedro but didn't find him. She suspected he was the mastermind behind this. But where was he? Happy birthday, she heard his calm voice from behind her. As she turned around, Pedro was standing behind her with a wide smile and a cake in his hands. Both her hands were on her lips, 
covering her mouth as tears began running. His smile widened, and he urged her to come closer to him to give him a side hug because of the cake he was holding. She whispered, Thank you. And he pecked her lips. When it was time to cut the cake, Anna slid the knife through the cake but realized there was something hard. She became curious and decided to cut the cake open. When she did that, she found a golden ring. And when she picked it up and turned back, she met Pedro already down on one knee. She gasped in shock. I love you, Anna, and I don't think I can do life without you. I also want to be a father to Jaden. So please, will you marry me? Pedro asked so lovingly that tears ran down Anna's cheeks as she nodded. He then collected a ring from her hand and slid it onto her finger. He got up and kissed her while the cheerful onlookers watched on with admiration. She had tears streaming down their faces, too. Three months later, they got married. As the years passed by, the couple groomed Jaden to be a responsible child. They made sure Jaden got the best of everything, school, clothes, and education. Jaden made them proud with his exceptional intelligence. In due time, he graduated high school, got into college, and studied computer science. Upon graduation, he was immediately employed in a tech company. His employment came with privileges like a house and the car with a hefty offer. His parents couldn't be any happier, especially Anna. Everything was going fine for this family until someone they never thought they would ever see showed up in their lives. That day, the family was having a small outdoor gathering to celebrate Jaden's birthday when a strange man suddenly showed up. The old man looked shabby and rough. He also exuded a foul stench, and Jaden felt nothing but sympathy for him. Jaden was about to offer the man a drink when Anna stopped him. That's the man who abandoned you, she said, ever so coldly. Hearing those words, Jaden went into a rage and ordered Jeff to leave at once. Shamelessly, Jeff went on his one knee and begged for listening ears. Through tears, he narrated how his mother had reached out to him about ten years ago. She had confessed that his biological father, the man whom she had cheated with shortly after getting married to the man he believed was his dad. So why did you come back? You knew ten years ago. What took you so long? Jaden screamed. Jeff had no sensible answer. He had actually gotten carried away with living a life without responsibility. After he dumped Anna, he lived his life carelessly. He went from party to party, dated several women, and spent lavishly. Eventually, he settled with a younger girl only five years ago, and that marked the beginning of his misery. She made his life a living hell. She never truly loved him and was only with him for his money. As a result of his marital problems, Jeff could no longer focus at work, and he got laid off. Just when he thought things couldn't get any worse, his young lover fled. That day, he had gone out to take a bottle or two. Whenever he went out that way, he would stay away for several hours just to escape the wrath of his girlfriend. When he eventually returned home that day, he got the shock of his life. Every single thing he owned was gone. Worse off, he began getting debit alerts on his phone until almost nothing was left. Overwhelmed with shock, Jeff suffered a stroke. Fortunately for him, his neighbor came to his aid, and he was taken to the hospital where he eventually recovered. As soon as he got discharged, Jeff knew he had to look for his original family. Being treated in such a way made him realize how badly he had treated Anna and his son. He had heard that Anna had remarried, but still believed he stood a chance. After all, she had been madly in love with him back then. How wrong he was. Anna told him that he got no place in their lives and that she revoked his paternity rights years ago. Together, mother and son then screamed at him to leave and never show his face again. Jeff walked away in shame. He later ended up in an old people's home, wishing he could turn back the hands of time and act right. What do you think about what eventually happened to Jeff? Share your thoughts in the comments section. If you like the story, surely the next video that's appearing on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our next videos. A huge kiss, and see you in the next story.